morning, church family. I'm really uh, I'm blessed, I feel like, to, to have been asked to do the communion for you today. And and um, I guess it's probably no real surprise what we might be doing out here on the Memorial Day weekend in the cemetery. We have a friend that, uh, that we lost 20 years ago, and we brought some flowers out. I had something else planned that I was going to talk about in, in relationship to the Last Supper, but I thought about something else when I remembered we were going to come out here today. So there's a few thoughts that I that I have, and um, you know, you look around at the flags and things out here, and and uh, and we think about the veterans that we've lost, and uh, and what that means to us personally. You know, many of these people that have flags and flowers on their, their, their graves out here, the people that placed those things there, they knew these people. They had a personal connection with these folks and, you know, they're remembering them. And they come out here and they sort of get their minds in a, in a little bit different state. You know, there's a, a solemnness that naturally occurs when you're thinking about your loved one, both maybe a little sad because they've been lost or because you're thinking about the good times that you had with that person. And uh, it kind of puts us in a certain mindset. And I wanted to kind of draw the comparison with the mindset that we maybe should have when we take the Lord's Supper. I know it's something that over the years I've often, I've often kind of thought, well, what is the mindset that you should have? We talk about preparing our minds for the Lord's Supper and what does that really mean? And I think there's some things that we can learn from the people that we know and take that to, to what, uh, what we know from the Bible and, and how we feel towards Jesus and those sorts of things. And, you know, these folks out here, unfortunately, when no one is left that knew them, uh, no one will know their stories really anymore. But Jesus, we know his story. It's been written down for all times. And uh, we can go back time and time again and we can get to know Jesus even though we weren't there to physically know Jesus. And I think that's a pretty, pretty interesting thing. It shows the power of the Lord and the power that he has that all these years, all these, these two millennia later, um, it still holds up. And, and we still remember him and, and, and we come to the communion to remember him. So I'm gonna read from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians some things um, chapter 11 and uh, uh, going down to um, verse 27 therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are, are weak and sick, and a number of you leave, uh, have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the, wor with the world. And there's a little insight there, and... and um, Again, something that um, sometimes I kind of wonder exactly what that mindset is, but I think what he's, Paul's telling us there is that um, when we are introspective and we examine ourselves and we, and we understand the sin that we have and the need we have for Jesus before we take of the cup, I think that that is part of what he means when we prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper, when we prepare our minds and consider what uh, what what we're to do and then that renews our relationship when we when we take of the bread and the and the fruit of the vine um, that's a renewal of our of the covenant and the understanding that we have judged ourselves and we know what we have done and we've examined ourselves 
and now we can again, you know, continue in that in that forgiveness and that hope for life. So, uh, so now we're going to get ready to to uh, take the bread, and uh, Paul said in, in verse 23 of that chapter, "For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread." And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I'm going to say a little prayer for the, uh, the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, renew the covenant and to prepare our minds and, and to think about Christ's broken body on the cross and his sacrifice so that we might live, so that we could someday be counted among your your people in heaven and not be forgotten in a cemetery somewhere. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon the on the bread as we partake of it this morning. In your son's name, amen. Verse 25, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, pro you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to give thanks for the, for the fruit of the vine. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we come to you and, and just in renewance of our covenant, the covenant you made to us, a guarantee of something greater and better that we have to look forward to, that taking away of our fear by your sacrifice and your blood. And just be with us, Lord, and guide us in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, folks will make it out tomorrow and, uh, or on Sunday morning for the outdoor service. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody again really soon. God bless.